Hi, how are you? I hope that you're having a great day and that you're enjoying the sessions. Really trying to be <laughs> to insert some form of humor, which uh, has been non-existent for some time. However, um, yeah, I can tell you one thing for sure: is entrepreneurship is not as complicated as we try to make it. As long as we try to simplify it. You do that which uh, is normal, you know, business trading. The person who does business does not need to really overthink. It's just the laws of nature, being kind to people and giving people what you would want to buy, something that they genuinely need and not, you know, you creating abstract ideas. The idea is not to just sell. The idea is to provide something that is going to help and improve their life and make them better. So <clears throat> when you look at it that way, then and whatever it is if you're providing it something that is needed then what is the hard part about that because whatever you're providing is a service that they need and people need to pay for it however the greatest challenge that i've noticed especially when you're an emerging entrepreneur is the challenge is for people to pay for your stuff everyone wants you to give you an opportunity you know as if it is just for the experience sake and you know be, and because you're constantly questioning yourself and thinking uh, am I really good at this? Am I really that amazing? So you're constantly selling yourself short and pro bono, right? And that's really not business. That's not really trading when you're constantly giving your work for free because that is your energy, it's your time, it's your intellect. And I came to realize just the other day when you're constantly giving uh, giving the work that is supposed to be paid for for free, then you're not in business. You're in a social enterprise. And being in a social enterprise is not always wrong. You just need to find out who is supposed then to pay for that service that it is that, that you're providing. They always ask the question is, who has my money? <laughs> Someone is supposed to be having your money. Someone is supposed to be paying for whatever it is that you're doing, right? When you go to work, someone is paying to have you for your time right for your 30 day uh, 20 days out of the 30 days in a month someone is paying for for that time when you're an entrepreneur you're supposed to be bringing something to the table the whatever value it is that you're bringing to the table someone is supposed to pay for that and so sometimes we may find ourselves lost or continuously wondering who is supposed to pay for this who is supposed to pay for my time who's supposed to pay for my value but that is now the client and once you find the value of it is that you're giving for which you have to be very clear what value am i bringing to the table and how much is it worth right and so i usually respect people who call me for meetings even from the time that i was starting um say from the consultancy you see when i was doing catering food people all, will always pay but for consultancy service like training and stuff like that or or public relations or social media or whatever it is a lot of times people will call you and they may just want help you know they don't want to pay for it they want to they want you to sort of just do it but when you meet someone who appreciates that this is your intellectual property and wants to pay and wants to to facilitate whatever it is that you're doing to be able to grow it, I really have such respect for people like that. And I think even me, it's made me more sensitive, you know, and to know better to than to constantly, let's say, ask young people to volunteer their time or their energy or their talent for free because then I know what I'm doing to that young person is disenabling them right <clears throat> so i'm truly also working hard on that thing um i think my friend Trisia mentioned that i really need to quit on this whole thing co collaborating and partnering because it's sort of a secret way of sort of um misusing talent right so i think when you're going to invest your time or your energy or a service into something if you're able to cost it you're able to do it much better without being grumpy <laughs> without being annoyed half the time and you deliver right but sometimes when you do it to free then you take it part-time however one thing that i learned also from from being in theater much as yes we were acting and we were being paid even if you are doing a show for one person you do it as if you are doing it for 1000 people if you're going to do something even if you're going to do it for free you know it's better you refuse to do it than to do it and do it badly or do it and not deliver you know and i always say that's the principle of negotiating for me personally i am really learning to be able to say no i don't want to be part of this than to join the team and be the person who's driving 
dragging people ar um, on the ground, right? So to do things well, um, it takes a lot to do things well. And uh, yeah, and sometimes being paid makes you do, th do them even better. So I think it helps to negotiate whatever it is that you want to negotiate in the, in the package that you want to be able to say, okay, I cannot do this and I can do this. But I think, yeah, co constantly as you're building your enterprise, and as much as you want to do a lot of pro bono stuff, the only time you have a business is when people are able to pay for that service. If it, it may be a service that people might not ever want to pay for it. So you reconsider and say, what can I add so that people will feel comfortable to pay for it, isn't it? So thank you again for joining me. I hope that you learned a new, very great tip today about your business, enterprise, or even your, your work at at work even when you're negotiating for salary there must have been like value addition right yes thank you so much